Welcome to week three of my 64 days on my Minimed 640G. The most exciting thing this week, comfortably, I am 34, but the orange skin on my Minimed 640G, this is pretty cool. So yeah, that's probably my favorite thing of the week so far. Just to kind of start with, I'm boring myself with saying it, but Smart Guard is working a treat. It's preventing probably two to three hypos per day independent of me, so I'm not requiring to do anything. It's just suspending the basal, resuming, it, resuming the basal and preventing my hypos. I am getting bored of saying it now, so this vlog is definitely not going to be concentrating on that. It's all going to be concentrating on preparation for my stag do. But here's just a clip of how the Smart Guard has worked this week during the day. So this shot shows how SmartGuard kicked in twice during the day to prevent hypos for me. So as you can see, the wiggly worm from the CGM was on its way down towards a hypo around about 3 in the afternoon. The SmartGuard kicked in and you can see that then the CGM, the sensor glucose, stayed nice and stable. And after about 45 minutes, it, the basal resumed. And then further on again, a bolus was given at about quarter past 4, looking at where the little blue dot is and you can see the CGM is on its way down to hypo again the smart guard kicked in about 4.45 and then kicked back in again about half past five so for me suspending and restarting the basal for 45 minutes is sometimes enough to just prevent hypos during the day so it's just an example of how it's working. I've got in contact this week with two other vloggers who are also doing 64 days on the Minimed 640G. That's Laura Ninja Betty Cleverly. You can see her information right here. So if you want to follow her, she's had similar experiences with the Smart Guard. And also Dave Tangerine Diabetic Sowerby. And his blog information is here. Um, so go and check those guys out, they will provide a, a representative sample. Obviously I work for Medtronic so I'm going to have a bit of a bias and um, go and see what they're saying. The main topic of the vlog this week is myself preparing for my three day stag do in Prague starting next Friday. I'm 50% looking forward to it, it's going to be a really good laugh but also 50% dreading it because I'm going to turn back up in a horrible state. Um, obviously going away drinking, dancing, partying and all the other things you do when a stag do is an extra danger for people with type 1 diabetes. So it's fortunate that for the last 10 years I've been putting myself in rigorous practice with nights out to try and come up with a plan to manage it safely. It's not going to be the best control but hopefully safely. So my plan is, as I've talked about before, um, alcohol reduces your blood glucose levels because it stops your liver producing glucose because it's too busy detoxifying the alcohol. So for me, I tend to drink alcohol that doesn't have carbs in, so all I need to worry about is my glucose levels going down so I can just reduce the basal insulin. If you have alcoholic drinks with carbohydrate in, that pushes them up and then you give a bit of insulin for it and then you've got a, a real risk of dropping down later. I haven't mastered that art, so I tend to stick to drinks that don't have carbohydrate content in. So my plan um, is normally, and what I thought I would do is have a practice last Saturday night, which I did. Um, my new housemate, Phil, who just moved in last Friday, we decided we'd go out for a night on the town and put my plan to practice. So the plan was I put a basal pattern in. So I had my standard basal pattern and then I put a separate basal pattern one with 25% of the less insulin. So I'm just gonna show you that one now. So into my menu, unlock it down to my insulin settings, down to my basal patterns. I use a copy and paste function. You can see my basal two there has about 20% less insulin in there. So when I set on the night out, I just get back to the beginning, just went across into my basal and then went down to basal patterns and then activated my basal two. So that meant that I had 25% less insulin going in all the time to walk out for my bloods dropping further down. What I also did is changed my blood glucose target setting in my pump, in my bolus wizard, to 7. I normally have it set at 5.2, so correction doses aim to bring my blood sugar down to 5.2. But for when I'm going out, I push that up to 7, so corrections only bring me to 7. 
And normally I have a sensitivity factor that one extra unit brings my blood sugar down by three. Before I went out, I changed that to six. So if I did do a correction during the night, it wasn't as aggressive to prevent myself going low. So that was my plan before I headed out. I stuck on my uh, dancing shoes and off I went and I'll just talk you through mm. using the information um, on the screen how that night went. The graphic here of how Smart Guard works during the night out shows that actually it started going at 8pm and pretty much the CGM stays in target all the way through the night from 8pm all the way up until 7 o'clock in the morning. But during the whole night, I had about 24 units of alcohol, which is two bottles of wine and four shots of Sambuca. And you can see that the actual reduced basal pattern I'd put on really did the job up until about five o'clock in the morning where the glucose then starts to plummet as the alcohol takes effect and the liver cannot produce en enough glucose as it usually does. So I was fast asleep and made it in about half past three. And you can see that Smart Guard kicked in about 7.45 and actually just prevented a hypo there which allowed me to stay asleep until about half past nine where Tinkerbell, my cat, came and woke me up and wanted a breakfast. And what is interesting is because I'd had those 24 units of alcohol, the actual hypoglycemia risk had really carried on until eight o'clock that night because when I gave my bolus, standard bolus for breakfast, I plummeted straight away and Smart Guard had to kick in again about 12 o'clock to prevent that hypo. So something that's taught me is that I have to be very careful with my boluses the morning after if I've had a big night out. So yeah, pretty interesting and um, just to see there that Smart Guard wasn't required through the night, but actually the day after. And that's going to help inform my plans for the, the stag do moving forward. What did I learn from last Saturday night and what am I going to take into the stag do planning for Prague? Well, the first thing is I'm going to have three different basal patterns. I'm going to have a basal pattern for day one, which I've got with 25% less. I'm going to have a basal pattern two for the second day where I'm going to have 35% less insulin. And then I'm going to have a final one with maybe 45% less insulin. Because as the days go on, my liver is going to lose less and less ability to produce glucose. Just to show you how easy that is, I'm going to show you how you can quickly copy the basal function and then um, knock it down. And just so you're wondering who's in the background, that's Phil, he's my new housemate. Just doing a spot of ironing. So you can see here, if I just go into my menu, and then down to insulin settings, can go right into basal pattern setup. I know that basal 2 has already got 25% off, so I can just take a little bit extra off. So options, go down, copy that, copy it into basal 3. Once it's in, just go and edit it, and then keep the time, and then just knock that down another 10%. Simple as that. Save. So I've got my basal pattern two, and I'll set the final one up after. I think what I'll also do just to be extra safe is for the stag do is put my lower limit on my smart guard up to a level of four so that the smart guard will kick in and prevent my glucose level going below 5.1 because whatever your lower limit is, smart guard will aim to keep your glucose level 5.1 above that just to keep me safe. And I will keep with my sensitivity of 6, I will keep with a blood glucose target of 7, but following what I found that I was going low when I did boluses on the Sunday, I'm going to change my carb ratio from 15 up to 22 so it's not as aggressive. The other thing I'm going to do is I probably will end up drinking a few pints, so some alcohol with carbs in. So I'm going to do a preset bolus so I can bolus from my meter. So I've set one up. You can see... My preset bolus, I've got a snack there of half a unit, which is I can just grab my meter, I can have my pump, which is somewhere discreet so it's not on show, and then just bolus for each pint that I have as I go along. So that should be useful as well. One other thing I'm going to do is make sure I adhere to the seven P's, which is prior planning and preparation prevents piss poor performance. So I'm going to take plenty of dextrose with me. I'm going to take my, obviously take my rubber skin, 
I'm going to take my ID bracelet and I'm also going to take my glucagon injection um, just in case one of my mates is trained on that. I'm not planning on having a severe hypo but a three day bender is fairly unprecedented so, so yeah. And the final thing is I obviously need to practice my party tricks and dance moves so I've done a little clip for you where I'll show you the headstand, the caterpillar and the flip up so yeah. What I will do is I will try and do a vlog next week, it might be a bit of a, a foggy vloggy next week um, but yeah we'll see. Thanks for listening. Everyone needs to have the party pieces for a stag do, so one of mine is the headstand, you're kicking the legs. <laughs> Pretty standard. Second one is a caterpillar. <laughs> and the third one, if you can manage it not too drunk, is the backflip. <laughs> Let's go.